in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you're welcome to another spirit filled message on fifty centric message if you're new to this channel I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then God is going to visit you always thank you for watching be blessed Turn on that so nobody will come and talk nonsense and tell you how God will kill you tomorrow throw away all that garbage Jesus greater than any prophet is a representation of the fact that God is slow to anger. Let God be true and every man a liar. Are we together now? It is the reason why we edit prophecies based on scripture and based on Jesus the Christ. Looking up to Jesus. He can be looked up to. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. That means our journey is with reference to the standard he gave us. There is nowhere in all the 33 and a half years of Jesus that I see him intentionally plotting evil against any. So God does not think evil because as seen in the Christ, it was not there. It is true that he judges, but God is slow to anger. So away with that theology that makes it look like God is chasing every man just to destroy you. It's not supposed to be a license for licentiousness. Don't get me wrong. But that it is consoling to know that we are wrapped up in the love of the Father. Behold what manner of love the Father had bestowed. When Jesus saw people who were, who, who were crying in funerals, he joined them to weep. We do not have a high priest who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity. You know why I teach you this? Because the days that are coming are coming with too much spirituality and spiritism. If you are not grounded on scripture, many things will confuse you. You will soon not know who God is again. Because there are pseudo actions that look spiritual, but they are not consistent with the Christ. Look up to Jesus, not Apostle Joshua Selman. Look up to Jesus, not a preacher. Paul only said, follow me as I follow Christ. Before you follow me, see who I'm following. Are we together? Let me tell you this. The revelation of God's love in my life has done something to me. When I say God loves me, I really mean it. It's not because of the results. He loves me. I have an understanding with God. Not only is he my father. This is not about covenant of ministry and business. Of God loves me. I hear the chains falling. That's what is happening tonight. Chains from all kinds of teachings. Well-meaning but destructive. The will of God is that all men be saved. And all men come into the knowledge of him. It is the reason why in this ministry, for instance, we do not fight our wounded soldiers. We stand for them. If people do things and go down, we are quick to come. You see me preach and it looks like I'm always holding a cane. Yes, I'm holding a cane, but remember thy rod and thy staff. I told you they don't do the same thing. Rod is for correction. Staff is to draw you. You need both. If you are a preacher and you have only staff, you will see the kind of members you will produce. If you have only a rod, you will also see the kind of members you produce. To totally comfort people, you need the rod and the staff. Hallelujah. I love people. If you are not growing in love, you do not know God. And the love of Christ is not at work in you. It doesn't matter what village you come from. We have been called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation. Are we together? We have been grafted into that life of love. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. Not when you heal the sick, not when you preach. Love. I hear the chains falling. 
Let fear lead your life. I hear the chains falling. You cannot serve God in fear. You serve God in reverence. I hear the chains falling. One of the most beautiful times in Koinonia here is when we are done with the service and I have to hug my children. You see all of them come over me. That thing gives me a feeling that I cannot begin to describe. No matter how you look at me and no matter what you are holding, I turn to my children and give them a big hug. They come with their, their wet shirt from fighting over Jews and Zom. I still hug them like that. I love them. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us. The love of God is a very powerful revelation. Many people have exaggerated it and their lives continue to be shredded into nonsense. They allow the devil to just come and people have exaggerated the love of the Father to the point that they have covered the issue of hellfire. Hell is still there. Oh. Listen to my message last week. Hell is there. Hell is real. Lake of fire is even worse than hell. Many people talk about hell and leave lake of fire. Hell is a spirit. Hell itself will be relocated to the lake of fire. Those who are in hell now have not officially started their judgment. The judgment will officially start when death, hell, the grave will be relocated into the lake of fire. We don't know who is there, but one thing we know is that there are spirits who are there, bound in everlasting chains. What I just told you is also love. Use this as a father and see how correct your children will be. When I was in secondary school, before they flog you, they would tell you what you did wrong. You will accept that I did wrong. They will pray for you, then they will flog you. <laughs> Let's start Koinonia secondary schools. You will see how we we'll train these children. We're not going to bring this secular, demonic, Babylonian training. Imagine that you flog your child and he knows what he did wrong. Just because you prayed for him does not mean you should not whip him. Foolishness is bound in the, the heart of a child. The rod of correction, not prayer, will drive it far from him. There is a psychological testimony that your child needs. I'm only serving what the chef prepared this night. <laughs> Remember I told you that I'm only a waiter. The principal chef is the Holy Spirit. And his meals are always balanced and nourishing. Say amen. amen. So there is the revealed will of God. Number two, there is the permissible will of God. Let me talk about that very quickly. What is the permissible will of God? Now look up please. I will say it, then I will repeat it as you write. The permissible will of God represents actions that are within the boundary of righteousness, God's character, and that directly exalt the Christ. The permissible will of God represents actions that are within the boundary of righteousness, comma, God's character, Comma, and directly exalt Christ. Now, just because it is permissible does not mean it is necessarily not the will of God. Permissible there does not mean God is managing it. Look up, please. There are things in scripture that are not written verbatim. There is nowhere in scripture that is written that you will be in Zaria now. There is nowhere in scripture that is written that you have five children. Now, please look up. There are dimensions of God's will that are not stated directly from scripture. At that point, we use the tools of righteousness. We use the tools of God's character. And we use the tools of the exaltation of Christ as the compass to help us to be able to walk around that will. These three first... Then, in addition, 
prophecies, visions, and the rest. Come, notice, the Bible says the kingdom of God is in, talk to me, righteousness, peace, and joy. Never in visions, never in prophecy, no. The kingdom of God is in righteousness. That means God's methodology, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Now, let me tell you this. This is the major area where, as believers, we have suffered a great deal again and again. This dimension of understanding the permissible will of God. Sam has a program in two weeks, return to worship. Now, whether or not you had a vision or a dream or God just put it in your heart, the truth is that that program, if it is done in righteousness, are we together? If it is done consistent with Christ's character, and if it will end up glorifying Christ, it is the will of God that will support the kingdom as powerful as the will revealed in scripture. Are you getting me now? This is where all the other auxiliary things like finding who to marry, a job to do, there is nowhere in scripture where it is written. That Pastor Alpha marry Annie, but within the boundary of righteousness, if you marry an unbeliever, it was not the will of God. Are we together now? But that within the boundary of the will of God, you can find a sister that loves God and her life is consistent. What is virtue? Virtue is a reflection of your closeness to the character of Christ. So I don't need to see a demonic sister or a devilish brother and ask, is that God's will? No. In Koinonia here, for instance, if you come and meet me and you tell me this girl that you use for example, you like her, for instance, it can be within the boundary of the will of God. If you are a well-behaved brother and you are responsible, are we together? It's my responsibility to vet you based on the will of God, righteousness, responsibility, love. And I can tell you with all the blessings of God and God will stamp it and endorse it. Are we together? There are very few people on earth who because of their lives, listen carefully, and because of the nature of what they do for the kingdom, God will meticulously place restrictions around everything in their life because the role that they play, someone like me now, you see, almost everything about my life is meticulously guided. Do you know why? The reason is because I carry a burden of a generation and the implication of everything I do is generational. But that, is not, that cannot be a template for you. It is the price I have to pay for carrying this anointing. There is a maximum number of cars God has told me and they never have it. If at all it comes and it's more than that. You see, God has searched my life and ha he, has, he has optimized the things that must be in my life for me to be effective. That functioning at your optimal level will require this. There are people who functioning at their optimal level will require that they are millionaires, not billionaires. Some it will even require that they are not millionaires at all. But it cannot be a template for everybody. Scripture. Come. This brother now can be trusting God for a job. Lord, should I go to Enugu or should I go to Lagos? It is not written here directly. The only thing is that the path of the justice has a shining light that shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. So these are foundations. I can take out time. If this brother is given a job right now, he needs to look at that job. Does this job compromise on my work with God? Are we together? Will this help me to be responsible? If it does, then within that, this gentleman can safely go on that job. Now, if for any reason, that decision he has taken is against destiny, God will go out of his way. God does not only lead by saying start, he leads by saying stop. There are times you don't wait for him to say start, you move. If he keeps quiet, he's endorsing you. If he says stop, you return. 
I, I'm, I'm showing you certain things about the will of God. Oh God, should I build a house? God is a God of portions. It's never his will for me to be a tenant for life. So if some money comes, wisdom that is profitable. Wisdom that is profitable to direct should tell me buy land and start building. If it is not the will of God, God will show me. Are we together? Our precious men here have married good and lovely sisters. Not all of them saw visions. Some of them just directly in the name of honesty. They saw a sister who loved God. They came to me and I said, God bless you. You may be waiting forever. For a dream, a vision, some occult type encounter. Now, listen, I'm, I'm telling, I'm using this as a point of contact. Listen, my brother, let me tell you. I'm saying it is not a, you can sit down and trust God. Look at a godly sister. God already gave you what virtue is. Virtue is not just the ability to cook. Virtue is your closeness to the character of Christ. Find a godly sister that looks like that. When a Job 29 man marries a Proverbs 31 woman, they would give birth to a Psalm 112 hope. Are we together? There are people today who God already answered them and gave them good jobs. But not understanding the concept of the will of God. They are waiting for a vision. NMPC gave you a job, you rejected it because God called you into ministry. I'm not saying it's wrong. Good, good things came to you and you threw it away and God said, I've tried for you. And you are there now wallowing around and being punished for not discerning the will of God. Say in the name of Jesus, I obtain grace to see, to hear, and to discern the will of God. You are with a, a man who is smoking and drinking and ungodly, and you said I will change him. You are not in the will of God. Let me just tell you straight up this night. The ministry of transformation is exclusively the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Any man that does not change before marrying you will seldom change. He will remain that way. And any man who changes just because he wants to marry you has not changed. Whatever a man does to only you, he's not really, he's not a virtue in him. If he's kind to only you, he's not kind. If he's truly kind, he will be kind to everybody. Kindness will so implicate him, even if he tries to lie, to come out. A lady who washes only your plates is not neat. The virtue of thoroughness and excellence must spill out in every area. I hear the chains falling. Yeah. I hear the chains. When God brings a destiny helper that is blessed, you don't fight him because you have been taught that all blessings come from God through men to men. And if the men don't have what you are looking for, you will not have it. So it does not make you to look down on others, but you pay attention. When Joseph of Arimathea is coming, you pay attention. When Pharaoh is coming, oh Joseph, pay attention. When Boaz is coming, Ruth, pay attention. When Ahasuerus is calling for women, Esther, pay attention. It's how God lifts men. God lifts men by bringing those greater than you to lift you. It's a technology. It's not hidden. How does God increase a ministry? By anointing them 
and put in the word so that they minister to people and the people that are built by that word will communicate benevolence. The offering you gave is not going to heaven. The offering you gave is what will pay boss tomorrow. Buy sounds. So it's not a mystery. The more I continue to be anointed and I bless you and dispense spiritual value, the more this ministry will continue to increase and I will also increase. There's no gimmick about it. So if you are poor and your pews are empty, the problem is the value, not just demons. The knowledge of God's will will help us to stop talking a lot of nonsense. Bishop Oyedeko says every man's calling is a high calling. Nobody has a low calling. Everybody's calling is a high calling. So if you are failing in your life, take responsibility. Don't say God made me to be small. Sit down and say, why is my life not moving forward? This cannot be the will of God for me. To keep begging every day as a man moving from pillar to post. I am a prayer warrior, but in addition, I should be blessed to be a blessing. Genesis 12 verse 2, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Hallelujah. Are we together? If you get married, four months, five months, your wife refuses to get pregnant. Don't sit down asking nonsense and say whether that is God's will. Be fruitful. Genesis 1, 26. Be fruitful is his written will. The priest that blessed you on behalf of God prophesied to you. Immediately you should know something is wrong. Listen, obey scripture. If you are wrong, let God take responsibility. Are we together? A job that makes you compromise on your spiritual life. A job that takes down your prayer life. A job that cuts you away from the community of believers that can build you. You don't need a vision. Get out of that job immediately. I don't care how much you are being paid. What shall it profit a man? He's talking profit. If he gains the whole world and loses his soul, I repeat, get out of that job. Get out of that job. Don't sit down asking, should I go? Pack your load and leave. Are we together? You are in a church, for instance, that is full of manipulation and full of all kinds of things. And you see that the character of what is done is not in accordance to scripture. There is no integrity. There is no godliness. There is no feeding of the word of God. There is the responsibility of a shepherd as designed by scripture. Any man who is not doing it is not a shepherd, period. I will give you pastors after my heart. You sit down and you, every week, everything from you is going. You, you pack your load and get out of that place. There is no need praying and say, Lord, should I stay there? No. Are we together? The will of God. So when I'm praying, back to what we are teaching, when I'm praying, my awareness of the will of God. So he's praying, Father, Apostle, use this lady for example. And I just found out that I like her. What is wrong with it? I'm not saying, I'm not saying she's your, 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 your wife. But if God joins two of you, we're happy. We join you. What, what, that, that's, I mean... Listen, God never told Ruth, Boaz is her husband. Boaz, hunger, took Ruth and Naomi. They knew they were about to die. She went to a field to glean her thing. Boaz saw her, a benevolent man. No strings attached. All marital processes start with a purified motif. That is an expression of who you truly are. He said, I don't know who this young girl is, but leave something for her. Let her be able to take it back to her mother. And God said, that's right. Remember, God is looking for those who will create the lineage that Jesus will be part of. So he would not handle anything with laxity because Jesus is about to come through that tribe.
we together? If you come and meet me as a brother and say, Apostle, God is showing me a particular lady. I'll say, let me stand representing what the parents will tell you. Straight up, I'm not even going to waste your time. Do you love Jesus? Yes. Congratulations. Are you a responsible gentleman? Yes. Prove it. There are two kinds of responsibility. There's psychological responsibility where you are getting the mindset that will help you to be serious. Two, there is structural responsibility where now you are beginning to produce fruit. Even if you don't have structural responsibility and you have a mindset that wins based on the word of God, you can stand to say, no, the way you are going, what is in your mind will eventually come. Are you seeing that? But you are not responsible. You are not under authority. You are a careless person. You live your life. Your relationship is like occult. Nobody is going to give you any daughter. At least not, not any of my ladies here. And you ladies, we have created a template to help you. If you like, don't follow a path that God has created for your redemption. And, and follow cunningly devised fables until it lands you in trouble. See, the, the, the house of God is supposed to be a place of guidance. I don't need to go to the Bible to find out whether it's the will of God for me to go back home this night. As soon as service is done and I'm done, I go back home. Why? Going back home subscribes to the law of responsibility. That every good man should have a home and should go back home and sleep at home. Are we together? Even the madman tried to stay in a place. It's the demons that made him restless. He tried. So men who don't stay at home, they are not responsible. It's a revelation. I hear the chains falling. Yeah. I hear the chains falling. Let's tie up this thing. So, the permissible will of God. Please look up, please. The permissible will of God. Actions that are within the boundary of righteousness. If you have to cheat your brother to increase, you cannot say it's the will of God. You cannot call that favor. If you have to bring people down to rise, that is not favor. If you have to kill to rise, that is not favor. If you have to bring 250,000 before you get a job, hello, that is not favor. Let me tell you the truth. No, sir, it is not favor. Knowing what the will of God is. So the first dimension of prayer is fellowship and growth. The second dimension is obtaining promises and making requests. All of this that we have been discussing are still under that. Thank you. Thank you so much. The revealed will of God, the permissive will of God. The third dimension of prayer that we'll discuss very quickly, our time is gone, is the dimension that makes for decrees and spiritual legislation. Decrees and spiritual legislation. I've taught you three dimensions of prayer. Number one, the dimension for fellowship and growth. Number two, obtaining promises obtaining promises and i told you that to obtain promises you must number one have a heart that is selfless number two you must ensure that your request is within the boundary of the will of god then you can ask confidently this is the confidence that we have that when we ask anything in his name, he heareth us. Are we together? And then number three, the dimension of decrees and spiritual legislation. Now, please pay attention. This is the dimension of prayer that does not so much deal with talking to God. This is the dimension of prayer that deals with rearranging realities based on the word of God. Please understand. 
This is the dimension of prayer that is concerned with not only talking to God, but talking to things, talking to circumstances, talking to time, talking to demons, talking to elements of creation to line up with the will of God. That's why I took out time to talk to you about the will of God. Because if you do not know the will of God and the provisions of scripture, decree and spiritual legislation will not be possible with you. What then do we say to these things? I know what God has made for me. I know what God says should be in my life. This is also the realm of prayer where words, listen now, become like arrows in a man's quiver. Words are instruments of creation. The following scripture. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 4. Please write down these scriptures. These are the scriptures that we must have in our minds when we want to engage prayer as a system for making decrees and legislating spiritual realities. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 4. The A part says, where the word of a king is, talk to me, there is power. Where the word of a king is, and then Revelation chapter 5, verse 10, just write it. Don't give us media. Just write it down. The Bible says we have been made unto our God, kings and priests, or a kingdom of priests, and we shall reign, not in heaven, in the earth. So I know under God that in Christ, my words are not ordinary. My words are powerful. Please listen, everybody, overflow. One, two, three, online. Listen carefully. This part of this teaching concerns you seriously. Number two, Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21. I'm giving you a few scriptures that guide you when making decrees and establishing realities in the spirit. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21. Death and life, help us media, we have to rush, are in the power of the tongue. Death and life are not in the nozzle of a gun. Death and life are not in the stone of a catapult. Death and life are not in the edge of the sword. The Bible says they are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. I use words to program life. I use words to program death. I can program life over territories. I can program death over territories. Number three, Job chapter 22 and 28, popular scripture. Write it down, please. Job 22, 28. Thou shalt also decree. Everybody say decree. To decree means to pass as law. Thou shalt decree a thing. And it shall be established not unto everybody, unto the one that decreed it. Thou shalt decree a thing. Thou shalt decree life. Thou shalt decree increase. Thou shalt decree victory. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. God has already brought them as the redeemed. Let them say so. Are we together? The word of a king, thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established and the light shall shine upon your ways. Number three, Isaiah 43 and verse 26. Isaiah 43 and verse 26. Read it please. Ready? One, two, read. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mightest be, in other words, bail yourself out of that situation. Bail yourself. Declare yourself acquitted. Come out of that situation by making decrees in prayer. 
this family, nobody rises. In the name of Jesus, I decree, I declare that the horns that keep men down, I am exempted. The Bible says you are, you are already breaking the chains. You are, you are exempting yourself. Listen, let me tell you. If you do not declare to be justified, then whatever you see, you take it like that. Scripture. Declare thou. Declare what? Declare thou health. Declare thou long life. Declare thou prosperity. Declare thou increase. This is not just some name it, claim it thing. It's, a, it's an ordinance of the kingdom. It is how we function in this kingdom. God is called in Genesis 1, 2, 3, the talking spirit. The spirit that moves by talking. Listen, please do not ever get to a point in your life where making decrees with understanding looks like a basic spiritual thing. You are silent, your destiny is silent. You are silent, every door remains closed. Declare thou that thou mightest be justified. I declare over my life, sometimes I stand in front of the mirror and I speak. Joshua Selma, you will never go down. You go up and up and up. The light of God is upon you. The favor of God is upon you. It's not every time that I pray that I'm praying for you. There are times I'm praying for myself too. There are times I'm praying for my own destiny. Even when I pray for you, I pray with intelligence. I know what the word of God says. Father, this is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. I declare your people are prospering. They are understanding. Their minds are enlarged. Listen, it's not every time you talk to God. No. There are times that you stand like Ezekiel and speak to the bones. Can these bones live? Only thou knowest. And he says, prophesy. Prophesy. He spoke to the bones and there was a sound. And it came. And all the bones came together but there was no life. And he says, Son of man, he says, prophesy to the four winds and say, thou wind, breathe upon the slain. And the breath entered them and they became an exceeding great army. Isaiah 41, 21. The Lord showed me this scripture in 2004 and it changed my life. One, two, please read. Produce your cause, saith the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasons, saith the king of Jacob. This is like a law court. And you are bringing the basis for why such and such and such should happen to you. Why should I lift your family? Why should I promote you? Bring forth your strong reasons. See, let me tell you this. Many people are prayerful, but they are wordless. Is why the prayer is not effective. We pray in tongues, important. We pray to God and we ask prayers, but most of our prayers are outside of the jurisdiction and the methodologies of the word. It is important. See, this is the missing link. This is where the disciples missed it. They were praying amiss. You can be prayerful and not get results because you are praying amiss fortified by the word the first dimension of Jesus's growth as revealed in scripture is getting the word first then we see him praying we did not have the opportunity to hear what he was saying in his 40 days prayer but at least we heard what he said in Gethsemane so we know that his prayer was consistent with scripture if it be thy will Produce your strong reasons. Listen, believers, your prayer life is going to be rich in this end time to the degree to which you understand these dimensions. As I approach the throne of grace to pray, I know that my prayer life is not all about petitions. There is a dimension of it that is tailored for fellowship. Let me tell you this. Many times, the determinant of what dimension you switch to is often the Holy Ghost. 
There are times you go with your heart heavy, but there are times that he chooses what dimension to be expressed in prayer. There are times you go to prayer wanting to decree and bind and cast, and God wants koinonia, fellowship. Are we together? Don't resist it. I'm saying this because many prayer warriors have missed it here. There are times you go to God and he, does, he just wants you to be still in his presence. And you are just praying in tongues and his power is just upon you. And you feel that you are not praying because you are not dissipating energy to be heard by another person. Whereas there is communion, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the koinonia, the fellowship, the sharing, the participation. And under those kinds of, most times, when God switches to that dimension, what is happening to you is impartation. Most impartations happen through that time of fellowship. It is not the binding and casting. In that stillness, you are about to go for a ministration and you are praying and you are just soaking. And for hours, all you are doing is lying down there like a dead man. Thirty minutes, one hour, and that anointing is on you. Waves and waves and waves of the glory. You stand up from that encounter and go for your ministration. And you will see the demonstration of the power and the spirit. You will see great grace. You will operate in the fullness of the grace that God allocated. You ask those who know me. When you see me praying and preparing for koinonia, especially for miracle service, you can be in the living room and you will not hear me. Sometimes when I'm alone, just like that, I can be walking around for a long time. Just walking around. Next thing I carry a paper, I'm writing, God is speaking to me. I'm walking. Sometimes God is opening my eyes and I'm seeing the things that he's going to be doing. I'm writing. And God is revealing things. See, let me tell you something. I'm not saying it's in the Bible. But it's something that has helped my prayer life. Try praying in the night. Minimize light. Many times when you pray in the night, you need darkness to see light. It's a mystery that only prayerful people understand. Help that person running out here. I have prayed most effective in an atmosphere where my eyes can see very few things. You hear God. The distractions are minimal. You are not looking and checking and then seeing your phone beep and say, ah, maybe it's the alert that has come. These things are distracting. God is speaking destiny things to you. You need your attention. I love praying in the night. Of the light. You may just have red lights here, flashing green light. It's enough for your eyes to see. Use your, your phone. That's why, you know, some of us who just gave our lives to Christ. Now, thank God for you, but you see, we had a privilege of praying well. Because many times we prayed outside and we prayed in the night. When God gives you money and you build a good house, build a beautiful garden. So not for visitors. For meeting with God. Go back to the Garden of Eden. A beautiful place. And you are praying. You are praying. Fellowship. Son, you have done well. It's time to move to the next level. Do it this way. Do it this way. Change this. Change that. Yes, Lord. You are praying. Sometimes it is God that introduces your petitions, not you. Okay, you were talking to me about the issue of finance for the ministry. Um, let me tell you what you will do. I am going to inspire you and a book is going to come. The name of the book is maybe whatever it is. And as you write this book, my hand will come upon it and it will go to the ends of the earth. Yes, Lord. You have received the blueprint. You will write a book that does not make sense. And it will bring results that don't make sense. Because you discuss with God in the secret place. Look at how God came to Abraham. 
study God's study Abraham's prayer life it was full of fellowship and then there are times that you carry a burden and you go to God sincerely Lord we need to talk there are things we need to talk about see let me tell you this do not be afraid to come to God with your needs do not feel less spiritual the truth is that God wants your joy to be full. Bring the school fees issue. Bring the, your brother issue. Bring the salvation issue. Bring it before him. Lord, why am I still going back to my village in my dreams? I thought I was free. Come before him. He's your father. This attack that I thought left me, this thing that I thought I'd, in, I'd broken free from one year, two years ago, why is it coming back to my life? You can come to God. Lord, why is it that when I'm blessed, I'm only blessed for three weeks, one week, I go back to look like my past. Something is wrong. You can pray. You can go to the God who answers prayers. And then there are times, my brothers and my sisters, where you obtain grace from God, but you need to stand. Can I tell you this? Most of the victory of a believer, listen carefully, will come through dimension one and dimension three. When you do one and three effectively, you will have little of petitions to bring. Spare me two, three minutes. We'll wrap up with rules of engagement. I will show you some of the do's and don'ts in prayer. Decrees are powerful. My day I speak to you. I command my morning. I command my afternoon. I command my evening. Hear the word of the Lord. Line up according to God's word. The Bible says this is the day that the Lord has made. It's not the devil that made it. If God made my day, let it look good. Because anything God makes, it is good. This is how you pray. Everything God made it is good. I remove accidents from my day. I remove trouble from my day. I decree and declare. It is well with me. I decree and declare. Favor comes to me. You get into your shop. You don't sit down and start calling and say, I'm now here. No. You lock your door. I decree and declare. Even if it's in two minutes. I declare that favor comes today. By the power of the Holy Spirit, my products are a delight to many. They are coming by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Recently, God introduced a very great friend to my life. Wonderful man. Extremely wealthy man. Very, very extremely wealthy. Um, I'll not mention the name. But then we're having a meeting with the man and then he spoke to me and he said, Apostle, let me tell you, before my workers start, 7, he's a billionaire, 7 a.m. in the morning, we all pray. We have fasting sessions and we pray. We declare to God that we have no wisdom on our own. I say, are you not blessed now? Away with that nonsense that when you pray your business, you, you involve God. Uh, you are not being social. Go to Dubai. Go to the Gulf Nations. And see how these people take their idols and take... They teach it as part of the ways to succeed. They teach you to do your yoga. They teach you to do your transcendental meditation. They believe that if not for anything, it relaxes the mind. Only believers who are ashamed and afraid of God. I'm not saying to go and be praying during office hours. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that you need to involve God in your life unashamedly. Listen, if you are here and you are in business, I'm teaching you this as God grants you grace. Even if your business partner is an unbeliever, you may not just shout and pray, but even if it's under your breath, Lord, this is the day. I bless the bread I'm making. I bless my shop. I bless this. I decree and declare. And you will see how your day will look like. Lord, every troublemaker is far from all that I do. For the Bible declares that the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
Recently, I had, I had the story of a, a gentleman. This is true. A gentleman who was just sitting down and he got an alert of over eight zeros. And two days later, a prominent institution in this country just called him and they said they are going to come and carry you to the court. We are associating you to a fraud case. And he said, what is all this? Did you receive so, 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 so alert? Yes, sir. Remain silent until you come there. True story. Alert came to my destiny. Do you know what? The account, the money was to be transferred to. I don't know how that happened. It eventually found its way to his account. Most evil, you think that is breakthrough? That guy is in trouble. Because of that thing, he may not get visas to travel again. It is not breakthrough. You want to transfer money, corrupt money, quickly to somebody's account. Then it's my own account. No, the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous. When I had that thing, I prayed for myself. Because people bless me all the time. I prayed for myself. Lord, let nobody carry stolen money in this country. So that they will now put on newspaper, exposed. Apostle Joshua Selman is involved with somebody's money. Shout no way. Listen, I'm telling you that if you do not decree and you live your life barren, you can receive 100 million in your church. One year later, you are in prison. Everything that is evil and will destroy you, may God keep it far from your life. But it will not just happen just by talking. Listen, you are the priest of your destiny. You are the prophet of your destiny. I will continue speaking over your life, but you must learn to speak. Speak. As believers, we approach life from the standpoint of victory. Remember that our decree is to establish. Hallelujah. Let me just give you two rules of engagement. I've said it, but our time is up. Number one, rules of engagement. Prayer must be approached from the standpoint of the love of God and the victory of Christ Jesus. Rules of engagement in the prayer ministry. Number one, prayer must be approached from the standpoint of the love of God and the victory of Christ Jesus. Prayer must be approached from two standpoints. Number one, the love of God. The awareness of the love of God. The fatherhood of God. That once I am within the will of God, God is not withholding anything. So it gives me the confidence to approach him. And then number two, the victory. Please, this is important. Listen to me, believers. Whether it is warfare or spiritual decrees and legislature, you are already a, vict a victim if you do not realize that you are standing upon the victory and the liberty of Christ. That is the basis from which we approach prayer. We do not approach prayer to win. We approach prayer to establish realities that have already been wrought in the Christ. The Bible says in Ephesians 1 and when you read from verse 3 that God has already blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Listen to me. So whether we pray and say I command that cause to leave, you are not necessarily, listen to me, you are taking advantage of the victory that Christ has wrought and you are now superimposing it upon the rebellion of darkness. Rules of engagement. David already won before he met Goliath, but he still fought. David already won before his covenant already killed Goliath, but he stood before Goliath to establish it. That's why he said, Goliath, I'm, I'm here to bring down your head, give it to the birds. He's finished. Hallelujah. From the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain, but your sins was not atoned for by casting it out. Jesus came and died. His dying was not negating what he did in prophecy. His dying was giving it expression. So I believe in warfare. 
I believe in casting out demons. But my approach is from the standpoint of victory. Are we together now? Please take it down. Let me sing one song. We're preparing to, to wrap up. Um, what's that that you just sing? Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. One more time. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Listen to me. Listen, Koinonia. You must approach life like one who has won. You must approach life like life owes you because you are victorious. Now, thanks be to God who always causes us. He's already doing thanksgiving. Thanks be to God. I never approach life to win. I approach life to establish victory. I never cast out devils um, as as, as the basis of victory. I cast them out because the Bible tells me I already have authority. This is very important. It looks like it's a little issue, but it's a big deal in the realm of the spirit. Listen. You are already blessed. That's why you prosper. You prosper to give evidence to the blessing. Prosperity is manifesting the blessing on you. You are blessed with wisdom. You are blessed with relationships. You are blessed with favor. You are blessed with divine direction. These are true riches. When you engage them and they produce prosperity, it is not when money comes to you that you are blessed. Money comes as a receipt that it is true you are blessed. Are we together? The awareness you own the universe. You own yeah. everyone on earth. You own that's my father. The universe. You own. Listen. Do you know why? I approach prayer this way. I don't approach prayer hoping that God will answer me. No. I don't approach, if it is not the will of God, I don't even pray it. If I'm confused, I inquire in prayer. And the spirit of revelation will come and open up scripture and bring the voice of God. I only pray when I'm sure of the will of God. If I am not sure, I pray to know the will of God. Then knowing the will of God, I pray to establish it. Listen, when you know this, your prayer becomes rich. Because every time I catch you praying, you should be doing one or more or all of the following. Fellowship or obtaining promises in the spirit or establishing reality. Whether you are interceding for souls, whether you are speaking over territories, it comes under spiritual legislation. That way, you are walking in dominion. This is what prayer was designed for. We are doing many things today that prayer was not designed for. It is the reason why we do not get results. Your prayer life cannot go down when you see the necessity of prayer. You know that without prayer, my fellowship will be bankrupt. Without prayer, I cannot obtain promises. And without prayer, I cannot create a climate of the word of God in my life. When do we pray? All the time. Anytime. Anytime is right for prayer. Anytime is right for prayer. You can be buffing and making decrees. My day is blessed in the name of Jesus. Any time may not be conducive for the study of the word because you need the Bible, you need materials, you need time. But any time is conducive for prayer. I may excuse you for not reading your Bible today, but I will not excuse you for praying. You will need time to settle down and really read and meditate. 
but you don't need any time, including when you turn to the other side on your bed. You can train your spirit man. Listen. If you are not filled with the Holy Ghost here, with evidence of speaking in tongues, it doesn't matter what you believe or don't believe about it. There is a dimension of the priesthood of the saints that you may never come into. Please hear what I tell you. This is not some debate. It is truth from scripture that there is a dimension of prayer. Tonight we are going to borrow five minutes from our time and we are going to pray. We are going to obtain promises and we are going to make decrees. Is someone ready to change things in your life? Please rise up on your feet. Listen, the Bible says, you have not because you ask not. If my little children here come and ask me and say, Daddy, I want sweet, I will buy them sweet for two reasons. One, I love them and two, I am able. Now unto him, the him loves you and the him is able to do. The two conditions for making sure your needs reach you have been solved. As far as God's side is concerned, he loves you and he is able. Please listen to me. God loves you and God is able. God loves me and God is able. Therefore, there's no restraint from him giving me the anointing. There's no restraint to lifting me. God loves me and he is able. God loves me and he is able. If I do not obtain, then it means my heart is selfish, dogged in rebellion, and I am praying outside of his will. Can you open your mouth and in the next two minutes just pray in the spirit? Pray in the spirit. What things soever ye desire, when you pray, when you pray, when you pray, Koinonia, you are praying to the God of the universe. The mighty God. Please pray, Koinonia. Yeah, you are. 
la baruta sada vakato shada branded kia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Obtained promises. Obtained promises. Obtained promises. What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that thou receive it and thou shall have it. Listen, in the next two minutes, I'd like you to receive things in the spirit. The things that the Bible said, please don't take casual this opportunity. We are operating under an anointing. I'd like you to declare, receive by faith in the name of Jesus. Receive mantles, receive anointings, receive open doors, receive favors, receive bl blessings, receive graces in the name of Jesus. Receive ease. you may receive that your joy may be fulfilled shouts of joy there are shouts of joy joy shouts of joy in my life, there are shouts of joy. Haruda Shalabarada Balakata. Shouts of joy. He pratoshela baba baba. Pray. Haritosh kelebra karutia. Obtain promises. Obtain breakthroughs. Obtain open doors. By faith. In prayer, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're wrapping up now. Please, I'd like you to take this remaining two minutes seriously. You are going to make decrees, you are not talking to God, you are talking to your destiny, you are talking to your life. Are you ready to pray? Open your mouth and make decrees. Lift up your heads, O oh, ye gates. Matos kabarantas kabaraka. Lift up your heads. I command closed doors be open in the name of Jesus. I hold the keys of David and I command the doors open that no man will shut. I decree and declare. My path is as a shining light. It shines brighter. It shines brighter unto the perfect day. I decree and declare, I shall not die. I live. I choose life. I choose life. I reject death. Not by accident. Not by the soul. God is a with favor like a shield. God is a with favor like a shield. In the name of Jesus, I go from glory to glory. I go from power to power. I go from grace to grace. From anointing to anointing. From wisdom to wisdom. Koinonia is like a shining light that grows brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. The Lord gives the word from this place. And great be the company of them that publish it. Bless your children. Bless your wife. Bless your husband. Bless your home. Bless your finances. Bless your spiritual life. Oh, 
We declare over Zambia. We declare over Kaduna. We declare over Nigeria. In the name of Jesus. Rising from glory to glory. Everything I do prospers in the name of Jesus. No failure in my life. No failure with me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen, my brothers and my sisters, listen to me. Please listen to me. Your prayer life must come back alive. I'm telling you this. You are here in this place and you know your prayer life is down. You are doing yourself a disservice. You are doing your destiny a disservice. If you are a man here and you don't pray, you will be a bad priest in your home in destiny. He spake a parable that men ought always to pray. There is nobody under this grace who should not be a man of prayer. Where did you get that one from? Now, I've given you a revelation that sponsors your prayer life. Listen, you have an assignment to find conducive places for prayer. Find it. God will help you. Pray. Make decrees. Speak over things. You buy a new phone. Don't just plug it and start using it. In the name of Jesus, I declare that within the time this phone is with me, it will serve me. I will not answer evil. I will not listen to evil reports. Learn to pray. You buy a new car. Don't just enter and drive yourself to your grave. I decree and declare the hand of the Lord is upon this. You pay for a new house or you buy a new house. In the name of Jesus, this is the habitation of the Lord. You enter a new shop, I speak peace. A new semester as a student or a new session, I declare. I give this session a name. I call it ease. I call it excellence. I call it recovery. Pray as a couple. Pray with your children. Pray as business people. Pray as a man of God. Pray all the time. Pray these dimensions of prayer and watch your life continue to rise. Death will come and look for you. It will turn back. Failure will come and look for you. It will turn back. Everything that does not have the signature of the Christ will come and look for you and go back. Your life only becomes an unending epistle of wonders. See, let me tell you this. I stopped being afraid of my success when I found out it was God and me that were controlling it. If you do not know that it's you and God in partnership controlling your results, you will fear it. These blessings that has come today, will it ever stay? Ah, will it ever stay? Yeshua Hamashia how dare you ask me whether my tomorrow will be better than my today of course of course no man's opinion is involved God alone and I agree with him that tomorrow will always dwarf today it's a covenant of growth that koinonia's tomorrow will always God will give us peace by all means Yeshua Hamashiach See, listen Honestly And may God forgive me if this sounds like pride But you see I love people I admire people I respect and honor people
but I submit to you in the name of the Lord. I have never ever desired in my life to replace myself with someone else. When I found out God's love for me, it's a blessing to be me. It's a privilege to be me. I'm honored to be myself. It's a revelation. God has invested his love in my life and protects it jealously. Like a hen watching her young. Even the egg that has not hatched, she still watches it with the same jealousy. Please let prayer change you. Most people, prayer is not changing them because it's not derived from knowledge. If I pray for you, rejoice. I really blessed you. Because when I pray, he hears me. It's not a song. It's an experience. He does not hear me as a man of God. He hears me as his son. He hears me as his bride. He hears me as his servant. He must hear one. If he does not hear me as his son, he will hear me as his fellowship in the place of intercourse as his bride. If he does not hear me as his bride, he will hear me by reason of my office. So if I tell you I pray for you, believe that I really prayed for you. I have a privilege as his son. I have a privilege as his bride. And I have a privilege as his servant. I have been indoctrinated about the responsibility of God over my life. I'm proposing this to you so that it becomes your mindset today. I never consider myself to be a second class person, not anywhere in the earth. And it's not by this vocal, I'm not mm, a settled conviction. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done. When God spoke to us and told us the nations will acknowledge what he is doing, I believed him. Many did not believe. But today we see what the hand of the Lord continues to do through our lives and through this ministry. I've shared with you that God spoke to me that I will lose the loins of kings for your sake. He said, kings will entreat your favor. I believed him. Yes, I believed him. Do you know a day will come, it will be a privilege for men to know you. It's not, it's not from a sarcastic standpoint. Please find a way of believing what I'm telling you. I know your past is not allowing you to believe this. I know your present is not me, ugly me, me, uneducated me. Do you know what it means for a man to receive the investment of the spirit upon him? Yeshua. next time anybody looks at you and makes it look as if you are a failure don't fight him just pray for him the next time someone looks at you you put your hand in your pocket and you come out with an empty pocket it's not enough reason to look down on yourself run away from people who demean you and look down on you they are sincere people but they are not good people this is what he has chosen to make us epistles of wonder there is nothing anybody can do about it. See, let me tell you. This is just a step out of the cave. Keep watching. You will watch episodes in your lifetime of what God can do with men. He will make us specimens. It doesn't matter what message. It doesn't matter what food. It's nonsense. When you find a key, a door will always open. It's not pride. It's the truth. A day will come, we will stand. And as those flags float, and you watch the nations crown for an opportunity to touch you, and says, you belong to this family. Can I have the privilege? You will stand and say, my God. There are bodies terrestrial, and there are bodies celestial. Even among the stars, one different from another in glory. My father owns the world. It's not some childish talk. Oh, mm -mm. I believe it. It is true. Nobody, nobody, nobody has the power to intimidate you. 
God will cause you to triumph. And get, see, don't belittle yourself. If God wants to use you, tell him, yes, I'm usable. If God wants to lift you, say, yes. God says, I will prosper you. Don't sit down and say, God, I'm too small. God, you mean me? I will be a man of God's, a woman of God's husband, a man of God's wife, me. I will be a big, don't let no devil talk you down. We come from cultures that always like to show we are not important based on vain parameters. Never call cost what God has not called cost. Peter, kill and eat. And he said, no, 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 no. He said, do not call unclean. They may call your tribe unclean. They may call your results unclean. But when God sits upon it, it will produce something that will mentor nations. A day will come, we will mentor kings. A day will come, we will make the word of God alive again. Like the days of Seth, and Adam knew his wife, and she bore Seth, and men began again to call upon the name of the Lord. All hands together, let's pray. Yeshua Hamashiach, Kominakane. Yeshua Hamashiach, Kominakane. One more time. Kominakane. Father, please use koinonia as a specimen to show the nations what you can do with men who are yielded. Lord, use koinonia. Let it please you, O God of all flesh, to use the men and women in this ministry and connected to this spiritual family as a specimen Lift people out of nothing, oh God. And may they become trophies that flaunt your glory around the earth. Place something upon our lives, oh God, that will cause us to mentor kings and speak your purposes to nations. Place something upon our destinies, oh God, that will cause kings to lose their loins for us. Grant us the grace for cities, the grace for territories, the grace for nations, that we will speak your word and reveal your glory even to kings. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, cause us to be your workmanship, that is recreated in Christ Jesus, even unto good works. Let our priesthood be seen all across the earth. Let that kingly dimension be seen all over the earth. Cause our words to be like the word of God. Let us speak, O oh God, and by our speech, let us shift things in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. Life to your prayer life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare life to your prayer life. I shift you to a new level of fellowship. In the name of Jesus, let there be mighty fire upon your life. I decree and declare that you will begin to command strange results in prayer. Change things in prayer. 
rewrite things in prayer. Keep darkness at bay through prayer. Command miracles, signs, and wonders through prayer. Open gates for greater glory through prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. Like Solomon prayed over Jerusalem. That every time you pray. May the covenant of this ministry back your prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ. The integrity that God has vested upon us. And upon this work. Let it also speak while you pray. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I speak to you tonight. Command results. Command strange results. Results that will dumbfound principalities. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Listen. Make it a point of duty to pray every day. As much as possible. Pray every day. I will advise that at least once at least the laziest person in koinonia should be able to fast at least once every month the laziest person the one who is not serious with his destiny should at least be able to fast once every month fasting should not be strange to you not as a ritual but as a way of opening the gates of faith to rise then shall your light break forth and your health will come speedily as the morning pray often pray as a couple pray get teachings on prayer get worship songs please let your prayer fire go higher and higher koinonia hear me please you belong to a family that prays pray pray like a priest that you are have personal times of retreat everyone here should at least in a quarter of a year in every three or four months i expect you to have at least a day where you should spend time praying just spend time dedicate that day to pray you have some money you can travel and go somewhere to a hotel just lock yourself or beg a friend to give you access to a place just pray be intentional about your spiritual life and no power in hell will bring you down in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Prayer is only for people who have handed their lives to Jesus. The Bible says, if I cherish iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not hear me when I pray. There are people here, please listen everybody. There are people here outside the overflows following online who are saying, Apostle, you cannot wrap up this series without giving me an opportunity to make Jesus Lord of my life. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Kateka Kos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a look at her. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.